So when considering first-line treatment for a patient with EGFR mutation positive lung cancer, there's three FDA-approved drugs right now in the U.S. There's erlotinib, uh, also known as Tarceva. There's Jafitinib, also known as Arisa, and Afatinib, also known as Gelatrif. So all three of these are approved for first-line use, and as an oncologist, you could choose any, any one of the three for your patients. Until recently, none of the EGFR inhibitors had been compared head-to-head -head against each other. So we didn't have great data to help us choose between one and the other. They're all fairly similar, and they had all been compared in randomized trials against chemo. So we know with great certainty that if you have an EGFR mutation patient, they should receive an EGFR TKI in the front line, if possible, rather than chemo, because that improves progression-free survival, response rate, quality of life. This has been shown over multiple trials using each of the three drugs compared to chemo. Uh, but we didn't have a great uh, trial telling us which were the differences head-to-head, -head. and so we were extrapolating and comparing cross-trial what were the response rates, what were the progression-free survival seen with each drug, and that's always a little bit fraught with difficulty to compare across trials. So uh, until this year, you could choose any of the three. Different oncologists had different comfort levels with the drugs. Um, for a long time, erlotinib was the only one available in the U.S., so probably most oncologists have the most familiarity with that one. Jafitinib is very similar and, in my experience, a bit better tolerated. And afatinib is the newest one um, that is a little bit different because it's a second-generation inhibitor, meaning that it's an irreversible drug. Uh, Trifitinib and erlotinib are first-generation drugs, and they are reversible. So I explain it to my patients that they're like a strong magnet, that they stick very tightly to EGFR, but if you pull hard enough, you can pull it off. Whereas the second-generation drug, afatinib, is more like superglued, so you can't pull it off. It's irreversible. Um, the side effects are a little bit higher as far as rash and diarrhea with afatinib. Um, so uh, you could choose any of those three, and comparing across trials, what we knew until this year was that maybe afatinib may have a little bit better efficacy in patients with the exon 19 deletion. That's the most common subtype of EGFR mutation. And looking at the Lux Lung 3 and Lux Lung 6 randomized trials, the two trials that establish afatinib as a frontline choice, similar to the others, in these two trials, there actually seemed to be a survival benefit over chemo for the uh, exon 19 patients. And this was not seen for L858R and also was not seen in any of the other trials of similar design using the other two drugs. So my recommendation um, until this year has been when a patient comes in, if they have an exon 19 deletion, those were the ones that I was really favoring a fat nib. And if they had L858R or one of the more rare mutations, uh, potentially using any of the available drugs. LuxLung 7 is the first trial um, to come to maturity that compares two EGFR TKIs head-to-head -head in the first-line setting. So we've moved beyond asking that question about how does a targeted therapy do compared to chemo, and now we're looking at targeted therapy A versus B. This trial was comparing afatinib against jafitinib in the frontline treatment for patients with EGFR mutant lung cancer. And the results were just presented recently for the first time. And uh, they, they are very interesting because they show the primary outcome is PFS, so how long the patients can be on the, on the drugs. And the median time between afatinib and jafitinib is not so different between the drugs. But when you look at the overall shape of the curve, uh, they are significantly different, favoring afatinib. And the reason why they're different but the medians aren't different is because of the tail of the curve. So the patients that do stay on the treatment for longer, uh, the longest patients, they seem to actually do significantly better being on a fat nib out at the tail of the curve than being on jafitinib. And this is really instructive, I think, because what this tells me is that, um, and this is, you know, even though the study only looked at jafitinib versus a fat nib, we can probably guess that erlotinib would be similar to jafitinib if it were studied head to head. And so for many patients, and especially those patients who develop resistance within 9 to 12 months, the median range there, there may not be a huge difference between the drugs. But there are um, 
a, a group of patients, a not insignificant number of patients, that actually will have long-term con disease control on these drugs. And afatinib may offer the best long-term control chances. Um, this uh, LuxLung7 also looked at the mutation subgroups, the deletion 19s and the LA58R, and both of those subgroups seemed to have the same pattern. In other words, they favored a fat nib when you looked over the length of the whole uh, progression-free survival curve. So for me, the takeaway message from LuxLung7 was that a fat nib may be um, really the optimal choice for both types of, of mutations and for any patients in the frontline setting.